2025 and you're visiting a brand new state-of-the-art contemporary museum. And you've come here today because they are offering you the opportunity to time travel for only $50. You will step back in time and witness Darug culture before colonisation. The Darug Nation are the first peoples of the Sydney Basin and are amongst the oldest living cultures in the world. You step into a completely white room and are handed a holographic headset. And as you put the headset on, the room darkens and you start to hear Darug song. And in the middle of the room, a fire appears and crackles warmly. And as you look up, the most phenomenal starry st sky explodes above your head. And you can hear someone approaching you to the left and, and you turn around and there's this woman standing in front of you and she has white ochre on her face and on her shoulders and on her chest and she's bare-breasted and beautiful and wearing an emu feather skirt, and a possum tail headband. She says to you in Darug, Na, Wunya, Norua, I see you on country. She invites you to come to the fire with you and uh, with her and sit down. And as you approach the fire, your body feels warmer. And you're not actually sure if you're warmer or if it's just your brain playing tricks on you from this amazing experience that you're in. A young child appears with a small kulamon with, filled with ochre. And then you are rudely interrupted by the museum attendant behind you saying, you can ask them questions, you know, as if you're not fully taking advantage of this amazing experience. But almost as if the woman has heard the museum attendant, she places her finger to her lips. She reaches into the kulamon and coats her finger with ochre and then reaches towards your forehead and the cold, wet ochre slips through her fingers onto your face and it is the most thrilling sensation because you know she's not actually touching you. None of this is real. The woman tells you her name, Ani Julie. She's a Darug woman, and she starts talking to you about what, it, what life is like for Darug people before colonisation. And as she explains the six seasons of Sydney to you, the soft scent of wattle fills the air, and you look ahead and the trees burst open with these bright yellow flowers. And she tells you what this means for the Darug mob. It means the mullet run. You take a few steps forward and the river appears and the water is crystal clear and abundant with mullet. And as the sun rises, you and Julie standing on the river, you can see Darug women in the distance fishing and hear Darug men singing and laughing. And then a colonial building pops up from behind you and the Darug community seem okay with this. They're still fishing, they're still singing, they're still laughing, but they're just wearing different clothes. And then the city pops up around the grounds and you become enveloped with fences and a big iron gate. Where are we, slips from your lips. And Ani Julie says, Nora, country, here. The museum attendant uh, pulls you back to reality, time's up. You take the headset off, but you really want to get back in that experience because what happens next? If you're brave enough to hop back in that experience, you would see that country that you and Julie were standing on, demolished, destroyed, for this very museum that you are ironically standing in to be immersed in an 80,000 years old culture that was already living and breathing on this Nura without the need of a fancy building and complicated technology. 
I work in the spatial web, and this is the new internet. It's an internet where everything and everyone will have a digital twin. A digital twin is a life-size, data-driven 3D avatar of real life, and digital twins will help us do our jobs better or understand complex scenarios or uh, analyze uh, impact, or indeed, it could just allow you to stroll through the physical world through your preferred lens. All the technology that I've described to you in this museum experience already exists. I've worked with Arnie Julie and Arnie Karina to make them into 3D holograms where we have embedded natural language processing and machine learning into their holograms so they can understand that you're asking them a question and learn how to better answer it in Darug and in English. And that sense of touch and warmth has been created by a company in Los Angeles called Emerge. And the landscape has already been created as a digital twin through the use of drones and satellite technology. Powered by 5G and billions of Internet of Things connected devices and served up to you through a series of artificial intelligences, the spatial web is here and you can currently experience it through really expensive headsets. <laughs> but they will get smaller and faster and cheaper and are doing so every day. So that experience that I shared with you in the museum, was that an immersive Darug cultural experience through the spatial web? I say no. I say it was a voyeuristic and romantic illusion of data and light, of without cultural grounding and responsibility and protocols. I know the real Annie Julie, and she doesn't play into this historical, lost culture yearning to be found. In fact, Darug Mob, we don't observe lost and found. We only experience invisible or visible, and we are making decisions about what of our culture is invisible and visible in the spatial web the same way that we have always done to protect our laws and our law and our language and to keep them alive, indeed to keep ourselves alive. If we don't step into this space, other people will tell our story for us, like the people that developed that museum experience. They chose not to show Auntie Julie as she organised mass protests and rallies and chained herself to that iron gate to prevent that land from being destroyed. Who gave permission for our sacred land where our ancestors are buried to be made into a digital twin? I know our ancestors' bones are resting in these places and they are being turned over by bulldozers. Are they in our digital twin? How do I honour my ancestor in a digital twin? Is this not Daragnora in cyber country? Do we not have indigenous land rights? I've been working in the spatial web for eight years and there's some foundational things that need to change in this world. I have a digital twin. I gave permission for my body to be volumetrically scanned for one purpose, but what control of it do I have in the future? I've been a real-time holographic avatar presenting at a conference just like this on the other side of the country, which was an amazing experience, until I put my head down and I saw my colleague's holographic head in my physical crotch. As a woman who's been sexually assaulted, I can't tell you the shame and embarrassment that I experienced seeing his head there. And through all that, I had to, in the moment while presenting, convince myself that this was just an illusion of data and light. It wasn't sexual assault, but how it made me feel, does that matter? 
using a photo of my ancestor and an app from the internet that produces 3D avatars, I brought my dead ancestor back to life. And within a few minutes, she was looking at me in the face and standing in my lounge room. And for the very first time, I saw my ancestor's facial profile from the side and her hair. But she was wearing a white crop top and a pair of skinny jeans because that is what the developer's idea of an AI-generated female should look like. I've been asked to recreate Aboriginal massacres in augmented reality because that it happened once wasn't enough and people need to see it for impact and for truth-telling and for reconciliation just because we can. Should we? I have been asked to scan places like the country I shared with you before they are legally destroyed. What of that country's spirit and knowledge and law is translated into its digital twin, and does that matter? Yes. To me, this matters because I know for thousands of generations, my ancestors have already been in the spatial web. First Nations peoples are the only peoples that are fully positioned to truly understand the responsibility of to make real and to live in reality and other versions of reality at once. First Peoples have been the custodians of the multiverse for at least 80,000 years, and we will bring our cultural protocol to the spatial web. In fact, my elders are working on this very thing with me right now, where the cultural protocol will guide our community about what parts of our culture we bring in and what parts we leave behind. It will talk to us about how we relate to spatial web practitioners and indeed machines and algorithms. The thing is, First Nations, we aren't the only ones with ancestors. We all have ancestors and many of us have descendants or will have descendants and our ancestors and our nora, our country, and our animate relations have not had the opportunity to determine how they are presented in the spatial web. And we have become responsible for making those decisions on their behalf. What will you choose for them and for you? What? happens next. <laughs>